What's up everybody? I am not sure what's true or false in this video. This is a gossip video just like on a gossip blog website. So I take rumor and tea and gossip from online, from magazines, from books, from wherever I can find it and I ball it up and I tell you guys a story. Now let's get to the video. <gasps> Baby I don't know what y'all sitting up there looking at. Y'all can run around here stinking, but I bet I'm not. I use native deodorant and body wash. It's aluminum free, paraben free, vegan and cruelty free. I have powder and cotton. Smells fresh like a baby's powdered booty. Buttercream and French vanilla. Smells like my grandma's fresh baked pie. And eucalyptus mint. Smells like I'm walking through a forest full of evergreen trees and mint leaves. They have a wide range of fragrances you can choose from. And baby, do not get me started on their body wash. I got fresh peach cupcake. Oh, it smells so good, y'all. Now about their deodorant. It lasts for 24 hours, dries quickly, and it does not make you feel all sticky and gooey like. They offer a plastic free deodorant as well. Now the formula of the plastic free deodorant is exactly the same as the original, but the packaging is made out of paperboard, honey. Who's doing that? Native, that too. They commit 1% of plastic free deodorant sales to environmental nonprofit. Now, three of these plastic free deodorants would be $39, but if you use my link in the description, you will get 33% off, making it $26. And not only that, you'll also get 20% off any toothpaste or any body wash. So go ahead and click the link below, honey, and get your native going on. Now let's get to our member shout out. We have Kayla Consuela, Boxing with TT, Kenster Phoenix, Kimive Record, Perceptive Angel, Miss Silky Black, Raja Noel, Peggy Littlefield, Erica Buford, Sharon Mitchell, and Jess Covey. Thank you all so much for becoming members of Ashley Says So. And if you are a paid member and you have not heard your name called yet, please do not worry, do not fret. We will continue to do member shout outs the further we go along. Now let's get into this twisted and very, very disturbing rumor and gossip involving Barbara Bakeland. And honey, if you are sensitive to abuse and just sensitive anyway, baby, I'm gonna tell you like I said on that Elizabeth Taylor video, baby, get up out of here. Oh, what y'all still doing here, baby? Get up out of here, like for real. Y'all gonna see, sitting up here trying to be bold. Let's get to the doggone video. Barbara Daly was born on September the 28th, 1921 in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Her father's name was Frank and her mother's name was Nina. The Dalys were very proud parents to their new baby girl, but everything was definitely not okay on the home front. Frank suffered from depression as well as other mental health crises and had a hard time dealing with life when everything did not work out just right. So the family would definitely go through a down period whenever he had these episodes and then when Barbara was around 10 or 11 years old Frank was found dead in the garage. He had committed suicide by carbon monoxide poisoning from the exhaust of his car. After her father's death, I'm sure Barbara suffered some mentally, but there's not any record to record exactly what was happening to her in this time period. But what we do know is that she and her mother Nina went ahead with their own life and unlike other families who suffered when their fathers passed or when the breadwinner of the family whenever they passed, Barbara and her mother did not suffer that way because Frank had made sure he had a life insurance policy that would pay out a lot of money in the event of his death. And with this money, Barbara and Nina moved away from small town life in Massachusetts and moved towards the big city life. And this is when they moved to New York and stayed in the Delmonico Hotel. And just to put a price tag on that so you guys can see how well they were living, the Delmonico Hotel is now Trump Park Avenue condominium slash hotel. So that was some pretty big money. With this bit of money and the fact that as a teen she had several wealthy boyfriends, by the time Barbara became a young adult, she was a well-known socialite. Everyone simply raved and oohed and awed when it came down to her beauty. In fact, she was so beautiful that even though she was not a true born blue blood, she was still invited to all of the high society parties. Men gifted her with expensive gifts left and right. They all wanted her on their arm. In fact, Barbara was such a hot commodity that Hollywood came calling for her. But unfortunately for Barbara, looks can only take you so far. And what she had in looks, she did not have when it came to acting. So child, after she did just a few screen tests, them directors and producers told her non acting tell to get out of their face. But honey, Barbara didn't mind. She was too busy making rounds with a few Hollywood leading men. And she also made a few female friends in Hollywood. And one of them introduced Barbara to her younger brother. And this guy's name was Brooks Bakelin. 
And baby, Brooks took one good look at Barbara and was plumb gone over her, honey. Then she messed around and gave him a taste of what those men in Hollywood had tasted. And baby, Brooks said he was not going nowhere. He wanted her all to himself. So they started dating immediately. And Brooks kept Barbara in the fine things that she was accustomed to. And Barbara would accept these lavish gifts and she would give Brooks all of these good hugs and all of these kisses. And Brooks was enjoying himself until he started to notice that those hugs started to get real tight like a little too tight and he discovered that Barbara had an obsession problem and not only that she also had some mental health problems now although Brooks had just now found out that Barbara had suffered with mental health problems Barbara herself knew a long time ago in fact she was going to see a therapist she was going to see counselors she was going to see all type of people to help herself and she also was trying to hide this from Brooks but like I said her obsession just became so much that he noticed that she had a problem and when Brooks discovered this he did not cut Barbara off instantly probably scared of what was going to happen but he didn't cut her off instantly but he did start to kind of distance himself or really basically just kind of slow down the relationship to a snail's pace. He had no plans for marriage but see baby what Brooks wanted did not matter because Barbara had made up her mind that she was going to marry this man and she was going to do anything to do it and so then Barbara came up with a little trifling sorry behind idea honey and that is when she faked and said that she was pregnant. So Barbara goes on a dinner date with him one night and has her hand on her belly and she tells him oh we're expecting a baby and Brooks on the inside is completely horrified he does not want this but he is a decent man and he has a decent name and there's no way in the world he is going to let this lady be pregnant by him and give birth to a child or better yet his child without a birthright like he just wasn't going to do that that was not going to happen and so he did what he thought he was supposed to do and he married Barbara and I think this happened in the year of 1945 so Barbara now has her man and she has her ring but uh oh she doesn't have a child so Barbara did what she had to do honey and she took that man to bed every single night baby until she finally did pop up pregnant and on August the 28th 1946 she gives birth to their only child Anthony Bakelin. After Anthony is born, it is very clear that Brooks adores his son. The little family moves into a very spacious luxury apartment on the Upper East End of New York, and per the gossip, they become this fun couple of New York high society. You know, everybody who is anybody is at their house. They throw these grand extravagant parties. Barbara invites other society women over to play bridge during the daytime. You know, they have this very upper echelon type lifestyle, and their parties were not nothing to sneeze at. Honey, they had Greta Garbo at their house, Tennessee Williams, William Styron. I'm not talking about they would invite these people over to perform or do anything like that. No, these were actual guests who wanted to come to their party. So yes, like I said, Barbara and Brooks are the it couple at this time. And with all of this going on, things seem to be going wonderful with this couple. But behind the scenes, Barbara's mental health is starting to crack and these cracks are starting to show outwardly. You see, after the initial joy of newly wedded bliss started to wear off, Barbara started to have to face real life and apparently she did not like her real life very much. But instead of her trying to sit her little tail down somewhere, she continued to try to keep up this image so the couple continued to throw these parties. And child, Barbara started calling folks ugly, she was calling folks stupid, idiots, whores, like doing all kind of stuff. And she became a very harsh and miserable woman and she like basically tortured people with her rudeness, especially when she was drunk. So if she's like this around guests and strangers and the public, can you imagine how she was when she was home alone with her husband and her son it was a lot and some would say it was too much so much so that per the gossip Barbara started to have affairs but honey it's claimed that her husband didn't even care about these affairs he just wanted her to do whatever made her happy at this point because he was so sick and tired of it but child I think that's a lie I think the reason her husband didn't care is because gossip also says that he was out here having his own affair. But whatever the case, this is how their marriage went for a while. On the surface, it was promising and grand, but below the surface, it had been reduced to cheating, lying, and verbal abuse. What's even worse than this, though, is that some of the tea out here claims that Barbara's son 
witnessed a lot of her affairs. But baby, let me tell you, if you think that's a hot mess, honey, hold on to your hats and your boosters, baby, because it's about to get way messier than that. So like I said, the Bakeland marriage is in serious trouble, but they are still entertaining all of these high society guests and throwing all of these parties to anybody that is foolish enough to still come around, although Barbara is talking to folks like that, but you still have these people that want to climb the social ladder, so they don't care how people talk to them. They'll still try to come to these parties just to try to get their names out there and make connections and things like that. And they throw one of these parties, and at this party, there is a foreign diplomat there who has brought his daughter, and his daughter is probably around 17, 18 years old. So somewhere along the evening, that diplomat's daughter ended up glancing at Brooks or looking at him or something like that, and baby, Brooks just went crazy. Baby, that man tried to be that girl's lover, daddy, and friend, and his whole life became completely wrapped up into this young girl. They started a very passionate and very intense affair, and it also became very serious, so much so that Brooks had decided that he had had enough of Barbara little loudmouth tail, and he wanted to get a divorce from her and go with his new young sweet thing. And baby, when Barbara heard this, honey, she started to cut up, girl. Child, she started running down the hallway, started yanking at her hair, rolling all over the floor, hollering and screaming. And Brooks, of course, tries to get her to calm down, but he stands firm in his decision that he does want a divorce. So then Barbara just takes it even further, and she tells the man straight up, she's gonna kill herself. Like, she's gonna commit suicide, it's gonna be on him. And this is something that Brooks cannot do. He cannot have his wife commit suicide, you know, because she's upset over him. So he calls off the divorce, he tells that girl, I'll see you later. Later, and he makes it work with his wife. Now, when it comes to Barbara and Brooks, as you can tell by some of the stuff I've already told you, they had one of those marriages where they were always consumed with themselves, always concerned with themselves. And so this kind of left their son, Anthony, to himself. He was always by himself. He had to raise himself. Unless... Barbara was upset with her husband or she was sad or she was going through some type of crisis. Then she would go from not paying little Anthony any attention to smothering him with affection and love. She would use him as her teddy bear. He would become her complete and only source of emotional support. And she would kind of like just put all this negativity and trauma onto him and he would kind of try to make it better for her. You know what I'm saying? So she would kind of put that responsibility on him whenever she was going through a crisis. So he needed to make it better for her. And she would also become a helicopter parent at this time because she wanted all of his time, all of his attention. You know, basically it was just her and her baby. But once again, that was only when she was going through something. And so you have no attention for long periods of time. And then these short periods of time or short bursts of all of these emotions on this young boy. And this is the way he grew up. And so as Anthony became older, he started to shut inside of himself. And as he became a teenager during those time periods where his parents would completely ignore him. And of course, those time periods were the majority of his life. Uh, Anthony would just kind of go off and do his own thing. You know what I mean? And now as a teenager, he could travel and do things like that. So he would just go off and just travel places. And there was this one time when I think he had traveled to Spain, he met this old Older guy named Jake Cooper and Jake Cooper was a bisexual man and so Anthony is 20 years old at this time and like I said he's looking for love and so he feels like he's found love with Jake Cooper and not only does Jake Cooper introduce Anthony into the gay lifestyle he also starts Anthony using drugs and when Barbara found this out she may have been mad about the drugs I do not know but I know she was furious about her son being homosexual and when they got home, Barbara and Anthony had a talk and he told his mother that he was a homosexual and this is the way he felt. And Barbara pretended to accept it, but on the inside, she did not accept it at all. In fact, her messy little tail went right back into her old ways of being trifling and scheming and she tried to come up with a plan to make her son not gay. In fact, per the gossip, it's claimed she forced him to watch heterosexual pornography. She uh, brought prostitutes and strippers in the home. She even tried to force him to have sexual relationships with these prostitutes and strippers. And then when she found out Anthony had made a friend with a young French girl named Sylvie, Barbara forced them to go on dates. She kept Sylvie at her house constantly, had the girl spending a night and everything. Some rumors even say that she basically had Sylvie to walk around in a swimsuit or really short skirts or trying to do anything to pique Anthony's attention. But child, the woman was just wasting her dog on time. Anthony did not want this Sylvie girl. He was not looking at her. But baby, listen here, there was somebody who was looking. Honey, they was looking, touching, smelling, slobbing, and everything, baby. And that was Barbara's husband, Brooke. 
Baby, Barbara had invited this girl into our home trying to force her to sleep with her son and the only person that girl was sleeping with was Barbara's husband, Brooks, baby. And honey, if that ain't some kind of ironic karma, baby, I don't know what is. And karma shot Barbara down even more when Brooks decided that he liked this little young tight body over Barbara's body. And soon he was back once again with divorce papers in hand and Barbara took off running down the hallway, rolling on the floor, pulling out her hair, and then she slapped Brooks and she told him she was gonna commit suicide. But this time, Brooks slapped her behind back and told her, baby, you can kill yourself today. I don't care, man, I'm gonna jump off a bridge. I am sick of your mess and I'm done with you. And so Barbara and Brooks Baiklin ended up getting a divorce. This, of course, left Barbara in her feelings very sad and depressed. And what is the thing I told you she did once she got sad and depressed? She would latch on to Anthony. It was up to him to pick up all the broken pieces. But see, what? Child. This time it's some hot scandalous mess in it, honey. Because see, not only was Barbara sad and depressed, she felt rejected. Now she felt not pretty. You know, she had all of these insecurities now. She was also dealing with the fact that her son was gay. Well, Barbara Baiklin sought to kill two birds with one stone. So baby, she had sexual intercourse with her son. Yes, she did. And I'm sorry, the gossip actually says that she raped her son. Baby, the folks say that Barbara was laying in the bed one night and she was crying and all this kind of stuff. She told her son, come in here, son. Baby, the boy went and laid beside his mama. Well, actually not a boy anymore because he was like 20 years old, I think. But anyways, went and laid beside his mama. Child, next thing you know, the deed went down, honey. Hey, listen, I told y'all it was disturbing. Y'all wanted to stay, well, y'all finna get it. But anyway, like I said, the deed went down and sources are not clear if this happened once or more than one time. But however many times it happened, Barbara did not see anything wrong with this. Baby, it is claims out here that she even made phone calls to friends, telling them about these situations like they were normal, honey. And how does that even work? Either the gossip has to be a lie about her calling friends, and actually, let me not say friends, she at least called one friend, I think her closest friend. So either that had to be a lie or I guess her friend was crazy or something too. But Barbara and Brooks kept their relationship going. Like I said, uh, we're not sure if the sexual contact kept going, but she continued to be this helicopter parent and continued to be uh, so overly emotional with him. And he just basically kind of turned into her husband a little bit. And the whole situation was terrible, but what made it even more terrible and what Barbara didn't know at that time is that Anthony just like his mother and just like his grandfather before him had also started to suffer from mental health issues. And his in particular was schizophrenia. So yeah. So anyways, like I said, you have this mother and son with this intense and possibly continuous sexual relationship, okay? Um, with all of these emotions. And like I told you before, this only happens when Barbara is sad and depressed and unhappy. Well, what do you know? A guy comes into her life. This is a 29-year-old man, and I think Barbara at this time is like in her 40s. But anyways, this is a 29-year-old man named Samuel Green. He comes into her life, and they start a relationship. And of course, Barbara rips all of her love and affection and emotion away from her son, Anthony, and puts it all on this new guy, Sam Green. In fact, Sam Green starts to notice what Brooks noticed all those years ago. All of those hugs and kisses and everything become a little bit too much because yes, Barbara becomes obsessed with this guy. And so he cut their relationship short very quickly. But this time, Barbara couldn't fake no baby because she couldn't get Sam in bed enough to do that. And honestly, even if she had tried to fake a baby, Sam Green was not the man that Brooks was. He was not just going to marry her. Well, baby, next thing you know, he is in his apartment back in New York and starts hearing all type of commotion outside of his window. He looks out the window, Barbara is out there with a lynx fur on and uh, nothing else. No shoes, no nothing. It's snowing outside and everything. And she is walking across Central Park Avenue and she was walking straight into his apartment building and she's knocking on his door demanding that he open the door to let her in. But of course Samuel did not let her in. But baby, that didn't help because gossip claims that she stalked Samuel Green for weeks. But here's the thing. While Barbara was so hung up on Sam Green, she had forgot about the love and affection that she ripped from her son, Anthony. Her son, Anthony, who has always been conflicted about the dealings that he had with his mother, and of course is now even more conflicted now that she's put sexual abuse inside of it. He was none too happy about his mama just ripping away her love and affection from him and going after this other man. And then he starts to think back to all of the 
the other times in childhood that she had done the same thing to him where she had kind of just like used him as her emotional crutch until she got back better and then she's off on her way you know Anthony forget you you nothing to me so Anthony now has his own trauma built up and he starts acting out towards Barbara first it's yelling at her telling her that he hates her and calling her all of these type of names then it turns into kind of pushing her and hitting on her and then one day it turns really really bad this happened in July of 1972 when they were in London and Anthony tried to push his mother into oncoming traffic as a matter of fact not push her actually the gossip says that he tried to lift her up over his shoulder and throw her out into oncoming traffic and luckily he was not strong enough to uh, complete this feat and, and also Barbara's friend who was with them came to Barbara's rescue and stopped him from throwing his mother out into traffic the Metropolitan Police did try to charge Anthony with attempted murder but Barbara would not press charges against her son he also continued to stay in the home with his mother but he did start to take psych evaluations and go to counseling and therapists and things like that but even though he was now getting treatment for his issue um Anthony was becoming worse and worse and he was still being very violent with his mother as a matter of fact it is claimed that the therapist and the doctors came to Barbara and they told her that you should not be living in the home with your son he has very serious issues but Barbara said no you know she was going to continue living with her son and that was that now at this point of time nobody is really sure if Barbara was uh, still having sexual relationship with her uh, son nobody knows that for sure but that house had a lot of mess going on in it and then four months after Anthony had tried to pick Barbara up and throw her into oncoming traffic he picked up a kitchen knife and he stabbed his mother to death and Barbara Baiklin was 51 years old and Anthony was 25 years old and actually when the police came to the crime scene they saw Anthony still there and they arrested him immediately he was institutionalized at the Broadmoor Hospital um, but then his friends started to say that all of this stuff had happened to him in childhood you know and his mother had did things to him and they felt like that it was not fair for Anthony to be institutionalized it had been eight years since the stabbing and they felt like Anthony was doing much better and that he had served his time and Anthony was released on July 21st 1980 and all of his friends were very happy for his release you know they had fought for him so they came over and they visited him and they talked to him and everybody was just so happy and his friends were even more happy when instead of Anthony being released to stay with them he was released to stay with his grandma Nina because six days later Anthony stabbed grandma Nina eight times and the friends sitting up there looking stupid then and that's what they get sitting up there always trying to advocate for somebody and not really knowing what's really going on with the person or the person's psyche or mental health then uh, got that little 84 year old woman stabbed and then not only did he stab that little old woman he broke a lot of her bones too baby they like that boy back up so doggone quick and this time they did not put him in a mental hospital this time they sent him to Rikers Island but get this though you can tell they got money because listen at this even at Rikers Island the boy was due to be released on bail child when they took him to court on March 20th 1981 they were going to release him on bail but uh something happened with the trial and it had to be like kind of like set back so they took him back to his jail cell and there Anthony killed himself he committed suicide by suffocating himself with a plastic bag but why are y'all trying to give bail to somebody who have murdered somebody and then just a attempted murder like what is going on with the justice system? But child, we ain't about to talk about that. That's a whole nother can of worms. But yes, this is the end of the old Hollywood scandalous tale for the semi-actress, Miss Barbara Baiklin. Um, If you like the video, go ahead and comment. And also, please leave a like, y'all. Please leave a like. That would help me so much. And also, please subscribe. Um, I'll be back very soon with another video. And I'm sorry about my voice, guys. I'm uh, kind of sick a little bit. But love you guys. Bye.